A year ago, I made a mini-series on the temporary native saltwater aquarium. You all seemed to really enjoy it, so I decided to make it an annual thing. However, this time it will only be one episode. So I went to the beach and I saw this little pond. A quick taste test revealed we were dealing with brackish water. Salt water from the sea, fresh water from the rain. So I decided this year we would do a native brackish aquarium. First of all I had to neutralize the salt in the sand with fresh water, only to discover that the glass was covered in algae. Now I could move on to collect water and animals from the pond. I didn't take any substrate from the pond because it was the same substrate that was already in the tank. Here you can see a rather unflattering picture of myself collecting materials. I saw quite some animal life, but I decided not to take this one with me because quite frankly, I don't think it would fit. Also growing on the beach and in the pond is European marram grass or European beach grass, which I want in the tank as well. Fun fact, marram grass is a highly invasive species in the Pacific coast of North America, as well as in New Zealand and Western Australia where it was introduced to stabilize dunes. As a proper Dutchman, I transported all of this in a cargo bike, inside of an old trash can, using an inner tube from a bicycle to form somewhat of a watertight seal. Now that I've put in the water and planted the marram grass, the tank is pretty much done. After putting on the top and the light, I started filming. The first thing I noticed was this larva. It isn't a red nor a white mosquito larva. It also doesn't look like a mayfly larva, but it's definitely a larva of some sort. All I know is that it has a very strange head with mouth parts that look like a little smiley face. Here's a little one on a stick. Also, notice those little long white things swimming. Here's a bigger one in front of the stick. My best guess is that these long white things are paramecium. I wouldn't know what else they could be. Also, here are some black dots on the stick I wanted you to see when filming this, for some reason. And here's an air bubble surrounded by grains of sand. How cool is that? Here's a little fly. How cool is that? This is a rat mosquito larva. When I woke up the next morning, I saw them. A small school of nine spined sticklebacks, or ten spined sticklebacks, or you know, pungitius pungitius. Unfortunately, they were very camera shy, so it was hard to get nice shots. But they are stunning little fish. After a few days, I was wondering why the water hadn't gotten any clearer, and while I was filming another smiley worm, I suddenly saw why. The water was completely filled with tiny little organisms, which were clouding up the water. These could be another species of paramecium, or some sort of little crustacean. I just don't know. If only I had a microscope. After making this discovery, I made another discovery. In the morning, the water is way less cloudy. That is because, th during the night, all the mysterious mini-creatures sink to the bottom. They are less active and not attracted to the light. The water is especially clearer near the top. You can see them sinking down to the bottom when I just turn on the light. When I was filming this I had something in mind that I wanted to show you, but I can't remember what that was at all. So there's that. Later that same day, I filmed the tank again. You can clearly see that the water became cloudier again. 
as a result of the mini mystery swimming to the top again. Pretty cool. Sticklebacks are actually relatively closely related to the pipefish that were in this tank last year. This particular shot reminded me of the opening scene from Finding Nemo with the Barracuda. Then I went to watch that scene and it was totally not how I remembered it. I started to lose my mind. How could I have remembered this so incorrectly? I kept thinking and thinking and thinking and thinking. Then it suddenly hit me. It wasn't the Barracuda scene. It was the whale scene. I really love that movie. It's really too bad that the fish are so afraid of the camera, but somewhat counterintuitively, they're not too afraid of being filmed from above, which means I can get these shots. Which is great as long as they don't swim in the reflection of the light. <clears throat> Every time I see one, I sneak up on it, but they just swim away. After a week it's time to dismantle the aquarium again. I've partially drained the water in order to catch the fish. Here's the first few fish, ready for transport. This is everything I'm taking back. The sticklebacks ate all other larger organisms. So here we are at the pond. I've planted the grass. Now it's time to return the sticklebacks to their home. Goodbye little fishies.